Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where we're we'll checking out a video titled, We Show You the Most Visited Castles, Palaces, and Fortresses in Germany. I hope that one day I can actually book a visit to Germany. Like, the reason why I just cannot do it right now, though I live in Europe, is just like, dude, I cannot tra travel the way how other people travel, where it's just like, boom, in and out. Like, I gotta, I gotta mesmerize everything. Like... I traveled to South Finland in Finland from North Finland because that's where I live at and it was just amazing but when I was leaving I was literally looking at something and I was like dude that I didn't even get to go oh my I didn't even get no, that what and I was like no 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 I should have been here more than three days and I was there for three days in just one city and I still couldn't do a lot of things. So if I'm not visiting somewhere for about a week or more, I'm not gonna do it. I have to just make sure that I, you know what I'm saying? I lock in and we get that properly done because like when I visit something, I wanna be immersed in that thing. I wanna feel that thing the right way, right? So I don't know when I'll be able to travel to Germany and visit, but I really hope I get to do it one day soon when I have you know, some cash because this takes money. I don't care what nobody else says. Traveling is not cheap. But either ways, man, uh, without further ado, let's check out this video, see what's going on over there in Germany. Also, I'm trying to be here at least two times per week, which is on a Saturday and a Sunday. Uh, I got a lot of shit to do, but um, yeah, <laughs> without further ado, let's check out this video, guys. What is the most visited castle in Germany? Could it awesome. be the famous Hohenzollern Castle in the Swabian Alps? Or Sanssouci Palace in Potsdam? What about Elts Castle Elts in the castle. Eiffel region? Yeah, I know that Or the one. ruins in Heidelberg? Could they be our top castle? Or magical Neuschwanstein? We looked at the visitor numbers for 2023 and were surprised to find that not all of these famous castles made it into the top 10. No way. We start in the beautiful state of Bavaria, in the foothills of the Alps. Linderhof Palace is Germany's 10th most visited castle. The park it's located in is a work of art in itself. It's elegant, playful and wow. serene. It was built by King Ludwig II of Bavaria, who when? modelled the gardens and palace after Versailles. Damn. The king built a total of three palaces, leaving behind an impressive architectural legacy. But Linderhof is the only completed palace he actually lived in. Known as the fairy tale king, Ludwig's castles were his dream worlds into which he escaped his official duties and his subjects. It's easy to get a feel for the Bavarian king's extravagant taste when visiting these castles. And it's not the last of his spectacular palaces we'll come across in this ranking. We continue to the German state of Saxony. Hopping on a boat in Dresden, we sail down the Elbe River and hop off in Pielnitz. The Pielnitz Palace and Gardens are among the most beautiful structures Saxony's electors and kings left behind. It was Augustus the Strong who had the grounds redesigned to his taste in the 18th century. Here we see the Asian-inspired Baroque style, which was popular at the time. Yeah, that's definitely Asian. It's hard. I can see that. These days, magnificent weddings and parties take place in the extensive park and garden area. Let's continue by boat to our next stop, just a short ride down the Elbe River. The Königstein Fortress has sat high above the Elbe for over 800 years. Oh. Withstanding all oh. enemy sieges, it has been... Hold on! Hold on! I know Shorty ain't saying 800! <laughs> nah, bro, like, hey. That is literally two times older than the United States. This is what I'm talking about, like, how you gonna pull up to this spot and just leave in a matter of 25 minutes, like, I don't call that travel, like, how you finna do that, like, you spend more time eating a meal than you spend looking at a building 
in a building that's not the size of a meal? How you finna do that? Like, it don't make no sense. Like, if you're going to just drop it off and just get up out of there, you really don't want to visit. You just want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to actually visit. Feel immersed. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I go to the basketball court to play some hoops, I don't leave in 25 minutes. Somehow I'm going to leave something. I say, oh, yeah, I want to see that so bad. 25 minutes, we up out of there? Nah, come on now. Transformed over the centuries, from castle to monastery to state prison and much more. Above all, however, it's known as one of the largest fortifications in Europe, Ooh, that's the size stones. of 13 soccer fields. Back in the day, Ooh, soldiers yeah. even lived here with their families. Saxony's electors also sought refuge behind the thick walls in troubled times and brought their treasures here for safekeeping. Groups from around Europe even come together to do historical reenactments of the Thirty Years' War. The story of the fortress high above the Elbe is certainly alive today. Wow, look at the clouds. Seventh place goes to Dresden's royal palace, the seat of Saxon electors and kings since 1485. That it can be visited again today is nothing short of a miracle. It was heavily damaged during the Second World War and primary reconstruction didn't begin until the 1980s. In fact, many of the rooms have only been open to the public since 2019. Now you can visit the collections of the palace once again, like the famous Green Vault. King Augustus the Strong had it built to display precious items from the treasury, which he even let some members admire. Saxony's rulers were passionate collectors and they wanted the public to know it. We head back to Bavaria for our next castle, the Munich Residenz. It's one of the largest palaces in Germany, so be sure to allow plenty of time to explore its around 150 rooms. Over the centuries, the Bavarian rulers from the House of Wittelsbach built this magnificent residence, which was then remodeled and added to over the years. The palace was also badly damaged in the Second World War, but has since been restored. You shouldn't miss the treasure chamber here either. 1,200 unique pieces await you, each more beautiful than the last. Ooh, wow. Lasten ja nuorten hyvinvointi on meidän yhteinen asiamme. Siksi OPS on lapsille ja nuorille mahdollisuuksia esimerkiksi taloustaitojen oppimiseen ja urheiluharrastuksiin. Meillä on jotain yhteistä. Niin tai näin. Se on klassikko. No niin. Eikö olekin paljon mehukkaan? In fifth place is Wartburg Castle in the state of Thuringia. This Middle Ages gem is almost 1,000 years old. It is the subject of many legends and tales about minstrels, knights and damsels. The most famous guest was reformer Martin Luther. He hid from his enemies here for 10 months. He used the time to translate the Bible's New Testament into German. The most magnificent room is the 19th century banquet hall, which once hosted lavish affairs. And it's not the last time we'll see it in our top 10 list. Wow. And now, off to the state of Rhineland Palatinate. We take a cable car across the Rhine from Koblenz to reach Ehrenbreitschein, the second largest fortress in Europe. A castle once stood here in the 11th century, which was then turned into a fortress. It had an important strategic location where the Rhine and Mosel rivers... So what's the difference between a castle and a fortress? Is it, is it like a fortress is like bigger? It just sounds like it. Eight. These days the fortress houses several museums and hosts open-air concerts and events too. Ehrenbreitstein Fortress stands at the entrance to the romantic Middle Rhine Valley. Around 60 castles can be found along the river. 
but none of them have made it into the top 10. They're far too small to handle a large number of visitors. Right. The same is true of the world-famous Sans Souci Palace in Potsdam. It has just 12 rooms. Another favorite, the Elbs Castle in the Eiffel region, That's is closed during the winter months, so it can't compete with its year-round rivals either. Oh, uh, really? That's sad. And what wow. about Hohenzollern Castle? Before the pandemic, it welcomed more than 350,000 visitors. But since then, it reduced the number of guided tours on offer. Tickets are now slightly more expensive, although visitors have more time in the castle. And now what you've all been waiting for, the three most visited castles in Germany. Talk to me. Third place can be found in the state of Baden-Württemberg. The Palatine electors spent their summers in the tranquil town of Schwetzingen. Prince Elector Karl Theodor mm. transformed Schwetzingen into a work of art in the 18th century. The palace plays something of a supporting role, with the almost 70 hectare garden stealing the show. Gee. Karl Theodor also built a mosque, not for religious purposes, but because he was fascinated by what he described as exotic architecture. We leave Baden-Württemberg briefly for a stopover in Bavaria. Neuschwanstein Castle sits proudly and gracefully in second place. Like Linderhof Castle, it was built by the reclusive Bavarian King Ludwig II. His master plan was to build a castle with 200 rooms, but only a few are completed. For example, the large banquet hall, which might look familiar. We saw it at Wartburg Castle. Ludwig loved the hall so much, he simply copied it. But as beautiful as Neuschwanstein is, Germany's most visited castle is in the German state of Baden-Württemberg. Our winner, Heidelberg Castle. Oh, With 960,000 visitors per year, it dominates the rankings. And that's despite the fact that much of the complex is in ruins, albeit majestic ones. The powerful electors of the Palatinate used to live here, the same who were in Schwetzingen. Their ancestral seat was here in Heidelberg, but the magnificent palace was devastated during wars in the 17th century. It didn't do nothing to it since. That's crazy. Only a small part was rebuilt. Here you can marvel at the world's largest wooden wine barrel. Whoa. But the majority of the castle is uninhabitable. It is precisely this aura of transience that fascinates visitors, making the romantic ruins in Heidelberg Germany's most visited castle. Wow. I would never imagine that something that is destroyed would be the most visited. Like, the one that is at number two, I would have thought that that would have been number one because I think that might have been in, in a couple of films. So I thought that would have been number one, but hey, the ruins, we like destruction, eh? <laughs> Humans. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was a really uh, beautiful video to watch. Like, I remember back in the day when I used to, you know, check out stuff about Finland because I knew I was going to be moving to Finland and it was amazing to, you know, actually be able to see the things that I used to see on Google and on YouTube in person. It was amazing. So, hey, maybe, maybe one day, man, one day. You can't wait. That's all I got. I, I can't wait because um, to actually behold these, it's going to be a sight to see. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. I'm out of here. Peace.